A quadratic function, we already know about that stuff. Uh, the good thing, though, is if we can do the completing the square stuff, then it will look, ah, to me, it seems to look a little bit better. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But if we're looking at just the quadratic function, and this is something hopefully you guys are kind of used to, is we would make a table like this, right? And would say this is x and this is y or f of x. And then we would usually choose values of x such as negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and find the corresponding y values for those. Then we can graph those as ordered pairs and we can see what's happening. But the good thing about what we've done already is we can find the vertex, which is good because if we looked at a graph, let's say that this is the line, I'm sorry, the parabola that we have. If we have a vertex, we know it's the same on one side of that line, axis of symmetry as it is on the other side of it. So once we get one side of it, the other side is just a co copy of that. All right. Now that may not make a lot of sense right now, but again, the vertex is, uh, well, it's a pretty important thing right there. So here's our first form for a parabola where you have f of x equals ax squared. If, if you really wanted to, you could write this as a quadratic where you'd have plus 0x plus 0. You can still find the vertex this way, and that's fine. Uh, but you'll find for all cases of this, where you have ax squared, right, because it's um, negative b over 2a. Well, b in this case is 0. So it's really always just going to be 0, right? 0 divided by anything is 0. And then you can find your corresponding y value on those by replacing x with 0. So a times 0 squared would be 0. And that right there is your vertex. This is your vertex for all parabolas in this form. Yeah, on this last part right here, if a is greater than 1, if it's the absolute value of a, by the way, so if a is greater than 1, then it's going to get narrow. That's because the numbers are going to be increasing quickly, okay? If the absolute value of a is less than 1, meaning it's some kind of fraction or decimal value that's less than 1, then it's going to widen because then it's increasing slower, right? If we were to look at a graph, this, this line is in this parabola, as it goes away from the axis of symmetry, is going up pretty quick, right? But if I were to multiply that by some fraction value, then it expands that outwards, or it widens it, right? Here we've got f of x equals 5x squared, all right? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do on this, just so we can see a comparison, is look at the base uh, parabola function, which would be f of x equals x squared. This one's pretty easy to draw. Uh, when x is 0, I would have a 0, so I got 0, 0. When x is 1, I would get 1, which is this point right here. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. When x is 2, then I get 4. When x is 3, I get 9. When x is 4, I get 16. Just like that, right? Doesn't have anything to do. See, I just want to compare x squared against 5x squared. Now, what we have on this, and then this is the reason why I want to do that, is I really got 1x squared. If I multiply this by 5, it should increase faster, right? Which is going to make that narrow, and that's what that last slide was talking about, which is why I want to compare these two. Uh, on the other hand, though, when x is negative 1, I would still have a positive 1y. Same with uh, x is negative 2, x is negative 3, and x is negative 4. See how it's the same on the right side of the axis, the y-axis, as it is on the left? So I really have something that would look uh, hopefully something like this. Sorry, with this electronic format, that's about the best I can do. Uh, so that would be x squared, right? 
Now since I'm going to be, I'll graph this one in purple so we can see the difference. Um, well, let, let me still address this x squared stuff. We can see we've got that uh, vertex, which is the lowest point on this one, okay? And the axis of symmetry would be at the y axis. Well, it's the same thing for this 5x squared. It's just, it's going to be changing a little bit different. And that's where the 5 comes in. So let's look at x and f of x. We'll choose some values and see what we get. So we'll say x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we'll keep it close to the middle and see how that affects everything. So when x is negative 2, then I've got negative 2 squared, which is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So that gives me this point, negative 2, 20. Again, I'm graphing this one in purple. So hopefully you guys can see that spot right on that 20. Well, let's look at x is negative 1. Well, if x is negative 1, I got negative 1 squared, which is 1, times 5 is 5. So negative 1 and 5, about right there. When x is 0, then I got 0 squared is 0. 0 times 5 is 0. And we're going to have the same vertex for both of these, okay? Because now, as soon as I go past 0, I'm going to end up uh, going with a mirrored image of what I have on the left there. So 5 times 1 squared is 5. 5 times 2 squared is 20. So that would give us these points. And that's a pretty small graph, but I think we did all right. So there we go. Now, again, we didn't need the red one, right? I only showed the red one so that we can see that as the coefficient of x squared, if it's a big number, it's going to narrow that in because it's increasing even faster. And if it were something less than 1, then it would increase even slower. And then maybe we would have something that looks like this. Okay. I apologize. I did want the axis of symmetry on this one. Um, and, and the vertex, by the way. So, yeah, it is 0, 0. We can see that the lowest point on that is that 0, 0. This is the vertex. And the axis of symmetry is that x equals the x value in the vertex, which is 0. So that would have been our other answer in addition to the graph.